If you went to college at the ripe old age of 18, there's a good chance you had no idea what you wanted to do with your life. You'd have been asked ad nauseum about what you wanted to be when you grew up, only to give some sort of vague answer. Then, off you march to one academic building or another and hope you'd figure it out along the way. Sound familiar? The lucky among us got some sort of grasp within those four years about what might make us tick. The especially lucky found that business, law, engineering, medicine, those types of degrees really got them going. Or at least they got them going enough to pursue such lucrative degrees. The rest of us settled for something like a liberal arts or a social science degree and hoped for the best. Many of us in school 20 plus years ago remembered the traditional college experience with a degree of fondness. And a lot of us did figure out our paths, either in school or thereafter. As such, many parents today want that same experience for their high school kids who are preparing to graduate. Yet, 18-year-olds now are often just as unsure about what they want to be when they grow up. And considering the record high college costs faced by today's graduates and the distinct possibility that they'll likely be staggering a debt when they do finish, many of them don't have that same luxury to figure it out. The whole situation has young people feeling hopeless and their parents wondering when they're going to move out of their basements. At the root of all of this is problematic thinking. Too many Americans still believe that earning a bachelor's degree is the only way to achieve economic upward mobility. While it is a viable pathway, it's not the only option. A traditional apprenticeship offers in-depth, hands-on education that takes the same amount of time as a bachelor's degree. Yet few students and their parents have ever considered this path as a means to achieve a long-term career and a substantial wage premium without a degree. Here's the terrible truth. College costs have increased more than 250% in the last 30 years. It shouldn't be this way, but it is. The average cost of a four-year degree is now over $96,000, and that's just for tuition alone. Add in the cost of books, housing, and other miscellaneous expenses, and the average bachelor's degree runs anywhere from $125,000 to $150,000. Student loan debt sticks with college graduates years or even decades after they've graduated. In fact, over 20% of bachelor's degree students owe more than $50,000. 6% more, owe more than $100,000. Meanwhile, an average trade school degree, the type which can also be earned at a community college, only costs an average of $33,000. Plus, students get paid while they learn. And if you think an apprenticeship is a form of settling, I challenge you to think again. The average 20-year net income for apprenticeship students is $441,000, more than the 20-year average for bachelor's degrees recipients. And almost 90% of employers surveyed say that having apprentices added value to their business. Beyond all the statistics though, there is a lot to be said for the life enriching experience that an apprenticeship offers. Apprenticeships create multiple career pathways to future and educational opportunities. <laughs> a traditional apprenticeship combines 8,000 hours of on-the-job training that is tailored to the specific trade the apprentice, is, the apprentice is pursuing. And apprentices receive a minimum of 576 contact hours of education that is selected to directly enhance and underscore the on-the-job training. What many prospective apprentices and their parents don't realize is that this education is often completed at a community college or can be articulated for credit down the road. More on that later. An apprenticeship differs from earning a bachelor's degree and then it's a job from day one. Programs registered with the United States Department of Labor Office of Apprenticeship have an earn while you learn model that requires participants to be paid during their apprenticeship. That means that apprentices start earning a wage right away. Before enrolling, apprentices are aware of their starting salary, when they'll get a raise, and what income range they can expect upon completing their program. Plus, programs determine the wage scale that all apprentices will receive throughout their program, so they can expect equitable pay to other apprentices in the program and financially plan for the duration of it. Even though apprentices are getting paid to learn, most apprentices earn college credit for the educational piece of their program, as many employers utilize community colleges for the education. This credit can lead to associate degrees, and depending on the industry, it could even later contribute to a bachelor's degree. So it's a potential backdoor entry for those who wish to pursue such a degree in the future. Even for those who do not earn college credit, maybe they went to a trade school for the educational piece of their apprenticeship, there are multiple pathways to easily convert their education to college credit through initiatives such as the Registered Apprenticeship College Consortium. 
Another sizable difference between getting a bachelor's degree and doing an apprenticeship is that apprentices are assigned a mentor or a series of mentors to ensure the apprentice has the training she or he needs to be successful throughout the term of their program. So while traditional college students may find inspiration from a professor or a teacher for a single semester, students, like apprentices, have someone to guide them through the on-the-job training over the entire term of the apprenticeship. This means they've got somebody to go to, to talk about the work experience, to talk about how the education relates to that. It's impossible to put a value on that. Then there's the value of making industry contacts from day one, something that won't likely happen while you're getting a bachelor's degree, at least not as fluidly. Because whom you know is as important as what you know. It may be cliche, but it's true. Finally, apprentices earn a US DOL credential upon successful completion of their apprenticeship. This certifies that they are a master in their trade, which is completely different than graduating with a bachelor's degree and then going out into the world as a newbie with no practical experience. The US DOL credential is recognized across the country and clearly communicates a worker's skills to potential employers. Apprenticeships are proven workforce development tools that offer substantial benefits to both workers and the businesses that use them. This is why an increasing number of organizations are offering these programs as employers come to view this method of training as a viable alternative to a university degree. They also give high school graduates who aren't interested in a traditional degree real hope for the future. And it just may be the ticket for weary parents hoping their young birds will ascend from the basement and finally take flight.